you think that it is? Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. So in this video, we're going to be looking at right kit or right gear or anti-right gear um, of the early part of the War in Northern Ireland or Operation Banner. So in 1969-1970, um, so we're going to have a look at a few bits here now. So this is the right shield, the early ones used in Northern Ireland in 1969-1970. Um, <clears throat> As you can see, they're about a three, so about a two foot shield made of aluminium alloy. This one looks like it's seen the wars, literally, probably plenty of crap locked it during its time or maybe some kid used it as time to practice for his BB gun not entirely sure but it's definitely seen seen the wars some of the paints come off and you see some of the undercoat of the last paint that was on it it has this like gloss black paint still on it so it's about a two foot shield or so um the last sort of say four inches or so are this like mesh so you can see through it so if I just lift it up here as you can see there as I said, made of aluminium alloy, um, and basically piss poor effective. Um, offered you very little protection. It was very flimsy, very uh, couldn't really stand up to much, and offered barely any protection. Um, all it could really cover was your vitals. It didn't cover any part of your legs. Barely covered your lower torso. Um, at the same time, you couldn't. Yeah, it's it was it was. Um, not a great design. You see these first being used in Cyprus, um, and then obviously in the other part of Northern Ireland. But they were very, very quickly replaced by the large perspex, or I can't remember the actual name of the actual material it was, but it begins with them. Picture like a predecessor to perspex shields, which were about a meter tall um, and offered a lot more protection and much more easier to use. Um, so we just turn it over to the back. As we can see the way you hold the shield, so you have a bracing point here for your forearm and then you have the actual handle itself where you grip and so on and so forth. So nice and handy, actually fairly light, um, but for the actual situations the guys were getting into in that sort of period, it was not really that effective. You see these obviously used by the British Army and then most of them end up in the hands of the RUC, the Royal House of Constabulary. Um, and yeah, so that's basically the shield. Um, I'll do a little thing at the end where I'm basically you've got the three items that we're going to show, and we'll crack on with the next bit. The next item is the helmet with anti riot visor, or the correct term. So if we can see it there, what's the pop up? Helmet anti riot visor attached. 
This is a 1970 example. Well, the um, visor is anyway. Um, basically, it's a standard Mark IV helmet um, with a right visor, um, anti right visor fitted to it with aluminium brackets. Um, you can see inside, this is the later liner. This one's a 72 dated one, I think. Um, but basically, the standard British Army helmet at the time with the right visor added. Um, good protection in the way, but very, very cumbersome. Very, very front heavy when the visor was um, deployed fully. And just very, very unwieldy. And when the visor was all the back and the back of the room, it made it back heavy as well. So it wasn't a great design. It was a stopgap measure which lived, lasted all the way until the late 70s when you gradually see it being replaced in its sort of this role by the uh, Cromwell helmet, which was basically a biker's helmet with the visor added, which was much better for the protection, but it didn't it impeded your hearing a bit, I must say that. So that's basically it. So you have the riser, right visor itself, the Perspex visor, or the, sorry, the material that begins with an M, I can't remember exactly, but basically that's what the later right shields are made out of. And you have the main shell, this has like a gloss, vehicle paint on it and obviously the later liner of the sort of mark 5 um, liner itself and this one actually has the three point change out system i have removed it just for now just because i need to um uh change it up a bit just because it wasn't um strung up right um so whoever owned this last i've had it for a few years now but i haven't really fiddled with the uh strap system at all but i might be putting a Early, just single point chin strap on there, just so you can sort of suit the more sort of uh, earlier look of Northern Ireland, etc. But yeah, that's the helmet. Last but not least is the right baton uh, or truncheon or whatever. It's uh, I think in the uh, actual um, orders for the actual stock of this, it's like um, baton or baton hickory truncheon. Yeah, it's it's weird how the British Army has these things. So like it'd be like. Helmet, head protective, riot, and yeah, basically in things along that lines. So if you have a look, so you can see it has the uh, store number. So if it wants to focus, I doubt it will, because the light is god awful. There we go. Yep, I'm marking. There we go. Sorry about this, this is all thing. So yeah, <laughs> the right button. So basically like, uh, same length as the shield, roundabout. So about two foot, two and a bit. Sort of a handle part to this end. Um, and then with a leather wrist strap um, at the end. Uh, some of them different designs depending on the manufacturer, but generally all the comments are this shape and length. Um, and the wrist strap, Obviously, it's there to stop it being pulled away, but at the same time, guys found that it wasn't very wise to slip the slip this over your wrist and hold it, because if someone tries to pull the baton away from you, you'll get pulled with it. So what they decided to do, along with say with similar things with the SLR as well, um, in the way of like stopping guys people taking away from you or just having a bit more security over it, put your thumb through the loop, twist it round, and basically that's yeah, almost like a um, a guard to the hand, so with the leather giving you a bit of protection, but also if it gets pulled away from you It just comes away and They're not really worried if you lose a baton, you lose a baton, you'll get it back <clears throat> It's not like your L1A1 one SLR, which will be attached to you by its um, um, Sling over your wrist So it'll be slipped over your wrist so no one can take it away from you. That's different unlike a baton because there's not really much they could do against you with a with a baton if you've got a shield or if you've got your rifle. Um, if you lose your your rifle, that's a different story. <clears throat> then they've got they've now got twenty rounds of seven six two, depending on what the situation is at the time. But yeah, so the right baton. So all three of these things together make up the basic, and I mean basic, right kit of the early part of Northern Ireland. So 1969, 1970. 71 at latest at this point it's really much an RUC thing but you do see these right shields being used in tandem with the later with the later um perspex ones as well so we'll quickly um pause here
and we'll get on to sort of how get all three items on and um, you can see how it sort of looks in general and also i put them on the mannequin or oh, actually no i'll add a picture in at the end of it on the mannequin sort of head. but i'll get a quick thing of me with them on so here it basically is so the baton the helmet and the shield this sets you up for basically standard right duties or um crowd control duties in northern ireland in 1969-70 so we're talking london dairy or dairy um belfast etc so these sort of occurrences were fairly regular. They were they were there to support the RUC in conducting uh, rate, in, in conducting house searches, um, vehicle checkpoints if needed be, and also keeping the peace when certain marches were on or etc. Depending on where you were as well. So it's basically this is what the standard infantrymen will be using for those duties at Northern Ireland in that period. So I really really hope you enjoyed. Um, me here looking like a bit of a div. But yeah, this is basically what they'll be using. So if you like this content and you want to see more, please uh, give the uh, channel a subscribe or a follow or whatever you want to do. Um, like, and subscribe, uh, like and comment if you want to do as well. Much appreciated. And I really, really hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you later, guys. Bye for now.